Should you use a no-code app building platform that doesn't give you access to the source code of your app? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, a lot of app entrepreneurs ask this question because when you're building an app using a no-code platform, that means that you're building the app visually and you're not working directly with the code. But that often means that you don't actually have access to the code. Now, if you ever wanted to switch platforms, leave the platform you're on and continue building your app on another platform, you wouldn't be able to simply download your code, transfer it over and continue with your app. You would have to rebuild your app. And that's why a lot of people ask this question. Now, we love using bubble.io as a no-code app building platform with our own clients. And so I'm gonna speak about Bubble specifically, but a lot of people ask this question because with Bubble, for example, you can't export your app's code and simply transfer it elsewhere. So you have to ask yourself, uh, is it worth it? Is it worth it to use this no-code platform or another no-code platform? And what are the risks? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I wanna make sure you stick around to the end because we're gonna talk about how this applies to your own use case. So first, there are three main reasons why most entrepreneurs decide to use a no-code platform to build their apps. Now, the first is the convenience factor, right? Using a no-code platform is hugely convenient because you don't have to code. You don't need a technical background. You don't have to be a programmer. You can step into the tech space, into the app development space and build your own custom app without having to code. So this convenience factor is a game changer. It completely demolishes the barrier of entry into this app development space for so many people, for businesses, for solopreneurs, for agencies, for consultants, for so, so many people, this convenience factor is a huge game changer. And number two, the speed. Being able to quickly build your app, even if you do know how to code, is another big game changer. Now with the right framework, you can build your minimum viable product on a no-code platform in weeks. We have clients who are doing that now and who have done it before. And, you know, this, this means stepping into the space, again, without a technical background. If you don't have one, that's okay. You don't have to know how to code. You can step in and still take advantage of that speed. So again, this is another huge benefit in using a no-code platform. And then third, you have a cost benefit too. Now, a lot of our clients have ended up coming to us because they initially, when they decided to build an app, they went the path of trying to hire a traditional development agency, as a lot of people do, because that is sort of the norm. And a lot of these clients were quoted $75,000, $100,000 or more just to build their minimum viable product. That cost benefit is massive. And this is another one of those things that just demolishes the barrier of entry for a lot of people because those, those price tags, you know, that $100,000 or more to build the core of your app is another thing that really closes the door for a lot of people uh, in, in being able to build an app at all. And then no code platforms are what opens those doors back up. And so those three big benefits are huge and they're what actually even allow a lot of people to build an app in the first place. But with those are going to come some trade-offs. Now, one of those trade-offs is generally not having access to your app's code. And again, this means that if you ever wanted to switch platforms or rebuild your app in another way, you couldn't simply export the code and just continue on. You would have to rebuild your app. Now, I want you to keep in mind that most app building platforms are the exact same. Most website builders, most app builders, they work in the same way right? If you build your app on that platform, you generally can't just 
transfer it over to another platform that works in a different way. This can kind of inherently turn some people off, even if they don't have plans to move to a different platform or build their app in a different way down the road. And just on principle alone, this can kind of be a point that kind of turns them off. But I want you to think about it in a different perspective. Imagine going to a restaurant, going out for dinner and ordering the special off the menu and then eating it and then going back and asking the chef for the recipe for that special so that you can take it to the restaurant next door and see how they cook it up for you. Now, would you do that? No, of course not. And I know that is a, a trivial example, but I wanted to kind of drive home the point that this is really common practice. It's not unusual to not have access to your app's code. Uh, again, many no-code app building platforms, many website builders, and even software that you might use as a service. They operate in the same ways. Think about software like uh, your email marketing platform, or maybe the one that you want to use in the future. Think about services like ActiveCampaign or MailChimp that allow you to build these uh, customized email campaigns or entire sales funnels for your business to run on and ge generate revenue from. Now you can't go into these platforms, create these customized sales funnels and email campaigns that work uh, in sync with your specific business and then simply download them and take them somewhere else. You can't do that and that's normal. So I want you to think about it from that perspective. And now the next thing I wanna talk about is the stage of development you're in. Now, when you're building a minimum viable product or an MVP, this is the core app that you're gonna use for testing purposes moving forward to build upon. When you're building an MVP, that convenience, that speed, and that cost benefit, those are the things you really need to efficiently and effectively build your minimum viable product. But I also want you to understand that you're not stuck in that MVP stage on that platform. With Bubble specifically, for example, uh, it's great for that MVP stage. It's great for post MVP stages as well. And I speak to that from personal experience because many of our clients who build their MVPs on Bubble, they continue to use Bubble for those post MVP stages very successfully. You know, these clients have built apps that they're using in their businesses or that they've turned into businesses in and of themselves. So make sure that you understand that now not all no code platforms are going to be the same, but just because you're using a no code platform to build your MVP doesn't mean that you're limited to that MVP stage. You can stay on that platform moving forward as well. Now, a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck because they're asking the question, what if? If I build my MVP on this platform, what if I need to move it later? What if I need, or what if I decide to use a different platform or build it in a different way down the road? Now, it's totally normal to have these questions and concerns. And to a point, you should be figuring out how to avoid obstacles that might come at you later on. But I want you to think about it from a different way. If you went down a different path, if you decided to outsource the development of your app to a traditional development agency, well, what if they get halfway through development and your entire budget is blown and you have nowhere left to go from there? What if you decide to actually learn how to code yourself so you feel like you have more control over the app, but you're a year into it and you still can't build your app? What if? There are always going to be what ifs. No matter which path you go down, there will be what ifs that you're going to ask. It's up to you whether or not you plan for every single one of them. Now, what we've learned is that a lot of times, most of the time, those what ifs never actually become a reality. And what ends up happening is all of that time spent worrying and planning for those what ifs 
ends up being wasted. So keep in mind that when you're using a no-code platform to build your app, you're getting some major, massive benefits that are breaking down that barrier to entry for you to step into this space in, a, uh, in the first place, right? You're getting that convenience, you're getting that speed, you're getting that cost benefit. And understand also that not having access to your source code is very normal practice. I also want you to think about the stage you're in with your own developments. This is for your own use case. If you're building an MVP, using a no-code platform, it gives you those ingredients you need to really be successful, that convenience, the speed, and the cost benefit. But also keep in mind that you're not limited to building minimum viable products on no-code platforms. You can move into those post-MVP stages just fine. Maybe there will be obstacles that come your way. That's part of business. There always will be, no matter which path you take. So you have to ask yourself, what's, what's the trade-off you want to make? Do you want to actually be able to build your app? Do you want that convenience of not having to know how to code, to actually be able to build a custom app in the first place? Do you want to be able to build it quickly? Because most app entrepreneurs do. And do you want to be able to build it without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars, a hundred thousand dollars plus, because that's very normal when outsourcing to traditional development agencies. In most cases, if you think through uh, this question in this way, and if you break it down in this way, you understand where your priorities lie. I hope this is helpful. If you did find this video helpful, give it a like below, subscribe to the channel for more just like it. And thank you for watching and we'll talk soon.